noticed. Rose trying to get open, fires away. Bang! 48. He was the NBA's best point guard, and then he disappeared. What happened to the great Derrick Rose? You know Derrick Rose from that incredible 2011 season. We'll break it down in a minute, because too many people think of him as a one-hit wonder. That 2011 season may have been a breakout of sorts, but Derrick Rose was great from the start. He was selected number one in 2008. First pick in the 2008 NBA Draft, the Chicago Bulls select Derrick Rose from the University of Memphis. To a team that had been seeking a star since MJ's last shot in 1998, Rose made an immediate impact, taking his team to the playoffs as a rookie, very rare, and taking the defending champ Celtics to seven games. He was an all-star by year two, a modern scoring point guard in a league that wasn't sure it was ready, but Chicago was ready. It's a dream come true to be a Chicago Bull, and I'm happy that the Bulls picked me. Again, they needed a star and they got one. More importantly, he was a hometown hero. Rose grew up in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the south side of Chicago, but basketball was his way out. In his junior year, his team won the Chicago Public League Championship, held at, where else, the United Center, the stadium where, only a few short years later, he'd become an instant icon. After being named Illinois Mr. Basketball as a senior, he accepted an offer from John Calipari's Memphis Tigers. The squad started the season 26-0, proving that he could win on any stage. There were some controversies, including a faked SAT score, but when it was all said and done, it didn't matter, because Rose had been drafted number one after his freshman season to the third biggest market in the nation. In his first two years, he was a star. By his third season though, you won't believe how high he flew. Because when people say most valuable player, it has to mean something, right? The Bulls had a solid roster filled with great role players like Luol Deng and Joe Kim Noah, but no real second string superstar. Remember, this was 2010. LeBron and Bosch had just signed with the Heat, changing the NBA landscape as we knew it. The Celtics had already created their big three. The Knicks were trying to make their own super team, the Nets were following suit, and the Thunder had drafted a big three. How could the Bulls expect to compete with one true superstar? Well, when you have a superstar like Rose, you figure it out. The Bulls won a league-leading 62 games, the first time the Bulls had cracked 60 since Jordan's time. It was all because of Rose, who was the only option for the Bulls in late game situations. Rose became a hero to everyone who hated the Heatles, a truly loyal player who won the right way, and he was rewarded for it. From 2009 to 2013, five seasons, only one player not named LeBron won MVP, Derrick Rose. At 22 years and six months, Rose was the youngest MVP in league history, eight months younger than the previous record holder, Wes Unseld. The Bulls clashed with the Heat in the Eastern Finals. It seemed like the entire world was on his side against the evil Heat, but the Bulls came up short. Well, there's always next year, they said. Yeah, about that. Because the next year, the injuries started piling up. In the lockout shortened 66 game season, he only suited up 39 times. That kept him off the All-NBA team, one year after making his first, and only, first team All-NBA. But when the playoffs rolled around, it didn't matter. They were on a mission for glory and redemption and route to a title. They were supposed to be LeBron's foil for the next decade. But instead, in the first game of the playoffs, Look, we're, we're looking to sweep you guys. You wanted us. You were crying out that you bypassed the, the harder team in Miami uh -oh, Heat. Uh oh Rose came down bad on his left foot. See him holding onto his knee, holding onto his knee and down. It's hard with that style of play. He'd throw himself across the court, ending with high-flying jams and vicious attacks to the basket. You can only play like that for so long before your body says enough. More importantly, the way Rose played it wasn't a sure thing he would ever come back. Because Rose was like a perfectly tuned sports car. Sure, an ACL tear is bad for anybody. 
Tim Hardaway was the first player to actually come back from a torn ACL and continue being a star afterwards. Since then, it's not a death sentence anymore. But there's a difference between a guy like Klay Thompson and Derrick Rose. Rose thrived on his athleticism, not just his leaping ability and speed, but his unbelievable acceleration. Again, he was like a sports car that was specifically designed with every inch intentionally placed. And in that round one game in 2012, that sports car crashed into a wall. There was no way to build it back the way it was. Rose missed all of 2013, then played 10 games in 2014. By 2015, Jimmy Butler was taking over the team as their new star. And by 2016, it was clear that one of them had to move. The team chose Jimmy. Were they wrong? Remember, this was the guy that was a hometown hero for the best team in the league. Time and time again, he was cleared to play but refused to suit up. You want guys to have the final say with their own bodies, but at some point, the team needs you. Jimmy was more available than Rose, and they picked him. Of course, Rose still had his moments. Rose trying to get open, fires away! Bang! It's over! The Bulls win at the buzzer! Like that game winner to beat, who else? LeBron James in the 2015 playoffs. That was supposed to be his big comeback, but it never happened. By the summer of 2016, the Bulls were done with him, and he had to figure out his new role in a new city. Where else than the New York Knicks, where point guards go to die. You name a past his prime point guard who's looking for his next chance, he probably played for the Knicks at some point. Jason Kidd, Stevie Franchise, Stephon Marbury. But for Rose, it was more than a second chance. It was his last chance to prove himself. And boy, did he deliver. His 18 points per game were his most since that 2012 season, and his 47% from the floor was his best since 2010. The team finished 31 and 51, but still, he was so back. But then the injury bug came crashing back. He joined the Cavs in 2018 to title chase with LeBron, scoring less than 10 points a game in 16 games before getting traded mid-season to the Timberwolves. The fact that he went to play with Jimmy Butler again was icing on the cake. Going into the 2018-19 season, Rose was 30 years old, and his career was already all but over. But then, the craziest thing happened. 46 for Rose! Rose gets inside, puts up a tough shot, and hits it anyway! Halloween 2018. Derrick Rose put on his MVP costume and tore apart the Utah Jazz for a career-high 50 points. That's right, career-high, half a decade after his peak. They needed every single one of those points in a narrow win, which ended on this defensive play by Rose. Ball drop, another rebound. Exum has it blocked in the corner by who else? Derrick, 2011 MVP, Rose. It was the start of a special run by Derrick Rose. His fans couldn't believe it. His teammates were super happy for him. No one deserved it more. Everything, man. I work my ass off, bro. He averaged 18 points a game on that crappy Wolves team, finishing sixth in sixth man of the year voting. It continued the next year when he put up 18 a game for Detroit. The next season, he finished third in sixth man voting. He was a crucial part of that Knicks team that finally made it back to the playoffs post mellow And somehow, he even got an MVP vote. Now that was a little fishy, but still, he was so back again. Which leads us to the age old question. Is Derrick Rose a Hall of Famer? Everybody knows that the Basketball Hall of Fame is pretty easy to get into. Guys like Casey Jones got in because of their team. Tony Kukoc got in because he was pretty good on the international stage. Mitch Richmond got in because he put up a lot of points on bad teams. Shouldn't one great season count for something? It counted for Bill Walton, who recently passed. He had a stunningly similar career to Rose's. An early dominant MVP, a brutal injury, and a late career resurgence as a sixth man. But Walton won two finals, one at his peak and one as a sixth man. So does that put him over Rose? In our minds, D. Rose has to be in. He was more transformative, more important to league history than guys like Richmond. After all, if a decade of mediocre all-star selections gets you in, shouldn't a year of transcendent? Eventually, Rose will probably make it to the Hall of Fame. But we can only be sure of two things. 
we'll never forget what it was like to watch that 2011 season, and we will never forget what it was like to watch that 50 point game. Do you think Derrick Rose is a Hall of Famer? Let us know in the comments and watch one of these videos next. Listen to the wrong opinion, useless NBA trivia and garbage rankings for more NBA content.